You don't understand the gravity of the situation. I, I, I can't believe you didn't make a joke about that. How would you feel if you bought an SUV for over $100,000 and it said 450 miles of range, but you're getting 380 it, It's miles. a tough thing. The more efficient a thing becomes, the, the more that little factors like rain or temperature or wind resistance or driving speed make massive differences. But with these new EVs, Lucid has come so far in terms of efficient design that it actually makes a big impact. So I would be frustrated, but that's not the whole story. So let's talk about charging. I think the biggest thing is charging. It is NACS. It actually was the first non-Tesla SUV to have an NACS. Now, there are some pros and some cons. So the Lucid Gravity, from what I remember looking at the documents, it can charge up to 400 kilowatts. 400 kilowatts is a huge number. That's right. pretty substantial. There's not many chargers that even support that. However, Electrify America, some of those Mercedes-Benz chargers, and some others will be able to support that easily, and Tesla V4. In order to hit that 400 kilowatt speed, you need to have a 1,000 volt architecture supported charger. So the downside of that is a lot of the United States is supplied by 500 volt architecture, or think Tesla V3, Tesla V2 superchargers. So if you were to pull up at one of those, the Lucid Gravity will not charge quite as fast as the Model X. It'll probably be around 220, 225 kilowatts, where the Model X will go the, two, the full 250 kilowatts. So they charge faster and slower in different scenarios, so, but the Lucid Gravity has the capability of charging a heck of a lot faster. So when you really break it down for someone who's evaluating buying these two vehicles, when you're using the most prevalent supercharging network, which is Tesla, like you're gonna almost get the same amount of range added in a 15 minute period between the two vehicles. 